Nightcrawler is one of the most influential movies of the 21st century. The movie directly critiques many aspects of today's society. Nightcrawler's main character, Lou Bloom, is a manifestation of sociopathy. He is ruthless and will do anything possible to achieve his goals, even if it endangers countless people's lives. When people like Lou need money to survive and are unable to find jobs, they are left to suffer and often take immoral and illegal measures to make money, much like the crime-ridden neighborhoods of modern-day cities like the south side of Chicago. Lou talks in a way that feels like he is reading from a script rather than having a conversation, which is unsettling to watch. Does this sound familiar? He acts like a toddler that is slowly learning more about the human race with every conversation. His enthusiasm comes off as creepy because he doesn't recognize the context of his situations. There is not a single moment in this entire movie where we see the real Lou Bloom other than the chilling mirror scene. Lou's only desire is to fit in with the world, and he does that by manipulation and lies. These lies are exacerbated when talking to Rick, where Lou uses every piece of vague business jargon imaginable to manipulate a well-intended person who can't catch a break into unpaid slave labor. They both need money. However, when the economy is broken, the line between good and bad is blurred. Every member of society is one bad week away from committing heinous crimes, while the elites are only getting richer. Amogus. The evil within Lou is seen most clearly when on his date with Nina, where he puts her in an abusive relationship with himself because it benefits him. He doesn't care about her. He only cares about how she will help him. She needs his footage to keep bringing in money or she'll get fired, and he needs a romantic relationship. Lou has no conception of how to operate within the bounds of society, which very often has him violating people's privacy, whether they are alive or injured. He sticks cameras into recently traumatized victims of horrific crimes to get footage of them, much like what paparazzi do to celebrities to get tea spill news out of them, breaching their personal space for a hit piece news article on BuzzFeed. He manipulates crime scenes in a borderline necrophilic way and disregards people's lives just to get a better shot. He also withholds crucial incriminating evidence from the police, as well as getting his employee killed, all of which simply because it leads to him getting the maximum possible amount of exclusive gory footage, which would make more money. He will do those actions without a shred of remorse. He went from recording the crime scenes to directing the crime scenes like a puppeteer. Despite all of this undeniable evil, Lou comes out the victor, with a successful self-made news business and more money than he ever had. Ah yes, the American dream. A malevolent man that built himself up from nothing to live the life that everyone wants. Lou abuses power and leverage to harm people and further his interests, displaying a profound lack of empathy while succeeding in the end anyways. Lou doesn't care what he does, only that he's successful at it. Does this sound familiar yet? However, Lou isn't the only person to blame here, but also the vile news organizations that encourage this behavior. The news corporations in the movie are a direct mirror image of the evil real-life news corporations that purposely remove crucial aspects of stories to further their political agenda and brainwash people. The news outlets are more concerned on what's shocking than what is true. The movie's news outlets only cover gruesome murders in rich neighborhoods, which furthers the notion that privileged white people are being victimized and also garners the highest ratings and generates the most money. This is a direct consequence of capitalism, where the effects of a struggling economy and a broken society trickles down to harm the individual. In capitalism, it can be the case that competition rewards innovation, but very often is the case that capitalism rewards flexibility instead. Who is comfortable with stooping the lowest and getting the closest to the victims while undercutting the competition the most? With Lou in the night crawling game, everyone has to adapt to Lou's cutthroat nature in order to remain successful. The more grotesquely Lou behaves, the more he is rewarded. This encourages that bad behavior, and soon enough, one bad apple causes everyone to behave worse in order to adapt. If Facebook breaches privacy in order to provide scarily accurate ads, others better do the same, otherwise they'll become obsolete. Lou views the world in a way where every person must use the leverage they have. That it's acceptable to ruin someone else's life as long as it means more money and power. See a pattern emerging? When Rick asks Lou for half of a job's money, Lou is visibly angry. He no longer sees Rick as an asset. Rick is slowly becoming aware of the manipulation displayed by Lou. Now, Rick is nothing more than a loose end, so Lou gets Rick killed. Sound familiar? Nightcrawler was way ahead of its time. 
It criticizes the pitfalls in our current philosophies that glorify the idea of winning no matter the costs. As long as a person is successful, how he got any of that is not important, and all of the people harmed in the process are just seen as sacrifices for the greater good. This idea is promoted to inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs, repeating the cycle of capitalism until society as we know it collapses. Also, Jake Gyllenhaal not getting an Oscar for this movie is a robbery.